Um, so another great thing about the way the TQL parser is organized, um, every piece of the language is represented by its own class. So it's very easy to understand the parsing of the language. Instead of it being done by one large script that does everything all in one place, everything is split up into individual pieces. So we have an actual parser class that handles parsing the order by clause, the select clause, a select expression, a subselect, a delete. There's a lot of other um, grammar rules that the parser implements. Let me get on and we'll show you some examples. Um, something that people always ask, you know, if we're parsing DQL and transforming it to SQL, that can, you know, be a pretty resource intensive thing, but it doesn't matter because we only ever parse that once. Again, we make use of caching everywhere. So when we parse a DQL query, there's no sense in parsing it again. You know, it's not going to change the second time around. So we cache the, the parse SQL, the final result, and then all subsequent requests pull the final SQL out of the cache instead of parsing the whole DQL query. Okay, so here's an example. So you'll notice here, it looks a lot like SQL. Can y'all read that? So. Is it kind of hard with the read of the green? Yeah. Well, anyways, I mean, basically, you have, it looks just like SQL. You have a select. You say that I want to select the alias U, G from the user, and I give it an alias of U. But then I also want to left join the groups that are related to that user. So you'll notice here, you know, in SQL, when I left join something, I have to specify how the groups are related to the user. But in DQL and Doctrine, we know that. We know how those two things are related because we map those objects. We map them to be related to each other. So when this is parsed, I can basically combine the information that I've gathered here from the parsed DQL query and join it with the mapping information to produce the full SQL with the, with the on condition, you know, saying that user is joined to groups through these set of columns. So if you don't, you know, if you prefer not to write, um, you know, the DQL manually, we have a query builder. It's basically just an object-oriented interface to build up a DQL string. So it's just great to have a, you know, a fluent interface for building these DQL queries. So that's useful for, um, you know, you may have methods that can return query objects that are reusable in your application. So you can write a query once you know, write a method that returns it, and you can use that query object multiple times in your application. So here's an example of what it would look like if we were to execute that query. So let me go back to this, this query. So you notice here also, okay, users and groups are not joined directly. They're joined through a reference table. So you have a user table, you have a group table, but then you also have a user group table. So you have, you know, user group has a reference to the user ID and the group ID. When I run this query, Doctrine knows that there's that, oh. Doctrine knows that there's a, is there a way to turn this right in front of the thing? Can I just unplug this? Yeah, hopefully, yeah, go ahead. So that final SQL that it's going to produce, it's going to have a left join in there to the user group table so that it can join those two together. And if you notice how I work with this data, you know, typically if you weren't using an object relational mapper, I would have to loop over the users, loop over every user group that it has in order to get to the group. So this just abstracts that so I can access the groups directly from the user. And the fact that the reference between users and groups is done via a reference table, it's totally, it's totally transparent to the developer. Um, so another feature that we have built into uh, Doctrine is the result cache. So basically, um, when we run a DQL query, if you don't want to hit the database every single time to get those results, you can use the use result cache method. And it'll basically, if you've configured a cache driver, it will save the result of this query in the cache driver, memcache, APC, or whatever. Um, and then the next time you, you hit that query, um, it'll get the results from the cache driver instead of the database. 
So you can implement, you know, use result cache and some smart caching strategies um, to make sure that you know you're never hitting the database, but also that cache is cleared whenever some data is changed. So you can implement some events that will automatically clear the cache when you change some related data. So the la last bit I'll talk about is how all this is integrated with Symfony 2. Um, and it's surprisingly simple. Um, you, you know, with Symfony 2, um, it's a matter of just enabling a certain piece of functionality. And the only two pieces of functionality that you need to enable are the database abstraction layer. Um, so in your application configuration, you can just go in there and turn on this configuration and immediately in your controllers, you then have access to a service called database connection that gives you that connection object where you can then execute queries. <clears throat> so I mean, that really, that really is it. I mean, you enable the service and you have access to it in your controllers. And then if you want to use the ORM, you just enable this service. And it's very simple because the ORM is just another abstraction on top of the database abstraction layer. So once you enable that, here's an example entity. We're just going to create a simple user, the username and password. And then we also have the console. So this is a convenience, uh, convenience command that will create your schema, create your database schema from this. So in this example, when I create the database with this, it's gonna create a table named user with the ID, username, and password. So basically, you can define your domain, define your entities, map them, and Doctrine will automatically create your database for you from that mapping information. So it's really important when working with Doctrine, you're no longer thinking in terms of databases or tables or columns, you're thinking in terms of your domain and your objects and the fields on the, on the properties of those objects. So you can really, really get in the object-oriented mindset and kind of you know, remove having to think about how something's gonna fit into the database. And lastly, um, once you enable the ORM, you then have access to the entity manager from within your controllers. And just like the previous examples, I can create a new user instance, persist it, and then flush, and it'll result in an insert. All right, so a little conclusion about why I use an ORM. Um, some of the main things is to encapsulate all your domain logic in one place in an object-oriented way. <clears throat> because everything's encapsulated and controlled in one place, the maintainability of your domain um, is improved. These, are the all, these all kind of build on top of each other. Because it's more maintainable, um, because, of all, because of that, it's, it's more testable. Um, you don't have to mock anything in your entities anymore because you're just dealing with regular PHP objects. There's nothing hidden or magical about that. And of course, portability. Um, this is important so that, you know, like I said, you don't want your domain entities to be bound to your persistence layer. You don't want your domain to know about how it gets stored. You just want to be able to use your domain, you know, use the logic inside of it, write some application code, and then persist it and not have to worry about how it's being persisted to the database. 